You can handle it. I reckon I can handle it, yeah. Good. So you happy you came then? Yeah, it's nice. Just me and you. I'm gonna fill it with petrol and I'll go and pay. All right. Joanne, give us some sweets, will you? Yeah. Sorry. So where's next? Um, uh, Catherine. You kidding? That's miles. Oh, I could pull up. Cat by the road if we get knackered. Do you know how long it's been since I've seen a washing machine? Mm. That is beautiful. Uh. Come on, then. We better go. <sighs> no. Uh, no. Oh. oh, no. That's shite, Ken. Come on. Yeah. Hey, don't stop. Anyone could have started it. Back. 
you'd know about it if something was wrong. I think we better check up on it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just take a second. Oh, okay, Pete, don't stop. One man do. One man and a dog. <laughs> Sparks coming out the exhaust. Oh, great. Yeah. Rev the engine, will you? Yeah. Rev it again, will ya?
What's happened? This is Sheila out there, and I think I hit her. That's right. Come on. You gotta help me! Hey, 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 Jesus Christ! This man dumped it in a... I don't like me! Look at me, Sophia! He's done to die! Get out of here! I had this noise, I had this banging. I have a different boyfriend, she's in the car. I got it. It's okay. I'll get these off you. What's your name, love? Hey. Joanne. Any boyfriend's name? Pete. I just... I just want to find him. Hey, I, just... I will help you. Okay? <laughs> but it'll take them three hours to get here. The cops are waiting on the phone for you, darling. You've got to come down. Come on. I'm going to look after you. Come on. There's somewhere quiet we can talk. Uh, yeah, kitchen. <laughs> we, we, we were driving up the Stuart Highway and, um, and, and this man stopped us. And it, well, what did he look like? He had a, a moustache and a cap on his head and droopy eyes. And Hair? <clears throat> Struggling, he looked like a local man. A local man. And he, he had a, um, a white truck, like um, like a ute. That's what he called it. What, a white ute. Use this later. Can't we look for Pete now? Look, it's important to get this down while it's still fresh in your mind. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you say he pushed you from the front to the back of the ute. How did he do that? That they were, they were bucket seats. Maybe there was, maybe there was a space, and he put me through. Yeah, yeah, I think he was like that. And the dog, <laughs> he didn't bark. No. But it was a country dog. It, it looked like one, not like the sort we have at home. What sort do you have at home? It wasn't a pet. It 
it was a working dog. So how come the dog couldn't find you in the bush? It was a working know. dog. I don't even know whether he was with the man when he was looking for me. While we're sitting here, anything could be happening to Pete. Please, just find him. Some of the story doesn't make sense, sir. How many youths have you seen with front-to-back access? And then there's the dog. Yeah, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's see what's out there. Found the combi van. Yeah, we found something else as well, sir. Looks like we got some blood under here. G'day, mate. I'm Mark Wilton for the Centralia Navigate. How are you? You fellas found any evidence to corroborate the young girl's story yet? No, call me. Hi. Hi. I'm Helen. I'm, I run this place with Liz. And this poor girl... Did you find him? I'm afraid not. But we did find a large blood stain on the road. I think you should prepare yourself for the worst. Anyone you want us to contact in the UK? So what's she like, this uh, Joanne Lees? She likes her cups of tea. I've been making them all day for her. Not so much as a please or thank you. She's holding it together too well. She did cry when I took her to the toilets, though. Kathy? Mark Wilton, what are you doing sniffing about my backyard? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> how are the police treating the girl? Like shit. They're about to move her to Alice Springs. They asked her if she has anywhere to stay. Can you believe that? Her boyfriend's just been murdered. Come on, we don't know that for sure. And Mum's in the UK. She can't come over. She's too poorly, and the poor kid doesn't want to trouble her, you know? <sighs> I feel so sorry for her, Mark. She's all on her own. I'm going to go to Alice Springs with her. I'm going to put her up in Liz's parents' house. All right, we'll just tell Joanne if she wants to talk. I'm here for her, right? Yeah, OK. See ya. Yeah, apparently the bloke had a dog, but it didn't find her. No. And she says the hands were tied behind her, but when the truck he gets there, they're at the front, so... Well, that's the thing, it doesn't make sense. No. No, they're taking her to Alice Springs now. Well, hang on, here she comes, I've got to go. All right. Hi, Doc. Saturday afternoon, 28-year-old Peter Falconio and 27-year-old Joanne Lees were driving north from Alice Springs. They were waved down just outside Barrow Creek. Mr Falconio got out of the car. It was the last time Joanne Lees saw him. 
Around 1am, a truck driver was in a road train heading south near Barrow Creek. Suddenly, the massive go over train what we know came about to abrupt that description at the moment. Well, the alleged offender is uh, described as 40 to 45 years old, possibly a little older. He has dark straight hair to the shoulder with some grey streaks. He has a long, thin face. He has a droopy grey moustache with corners tapering down below his mouth. Heavy bag under they his They had eyes. you in there for six hours. What were they doing with you? Um, questions. Another statement. They lost the last one. Why are they putting you through all this? If it helps find P, I'll do anything. I'll make you a cup of tea, love. Hmm? Today, one of the biggest roadblock and search operations ever mounted in this country is we underway. The, uh, the southern part of the Northern, Northern Territory, we were looking at probably something in the vicinity of uh, a million square kilometres. Well, the British media have splashed with the story from the Southern's Northern Territory. The state and overseas journalists have flown in. BBC News headlines now at 8 p.m. across the Northern the Territory. The Joanne Lees remains in an undisclosed location in Alice Hubble was found on Sunday. As police search the outback, Joanne Lees, Peter's girlfriend, is still too traumatised to talk. Uh, no, sorry, she can't speak to anyone right now. OK, bye. That was the BBC. <laughs> How'd they know you're here? The police said not to speak to journalists. Joanne, there's rumours going around. They're saying that... that you... sat and watched while Pete was dragged from the combi. What? And that you were raped. But I wasn't. How can they say that? Hello? No, sorry, she's not talking to anyone. Thank you. This is all getting out of hand. Mark's a local journalist. Not like these bigwigs from the city. He'll look after you. Listen, the police aren't telling you everything. They've, um... I've heard they've got a video of a suspect at a truck stop. No. But keeping the media from you is nuts. Right? It's crazy. I mean, the bloody police, they're drip-feeding us information. You know, they're not doing you any favours. Look, I don't um, I don't want to slug off the police, OK? I understand that. Let's get your story out there. Okay. Okay. You ready? She says it takes years to learn stuff like this. It's because you're not wearing your tutu. Oh, piss off, Frank. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, the police told us Joe was trying to get her hand from her back to her front when she was hiding in the bush. He's testing it out. <laughs> I don't think she's lying. When I met her, she seemed genuinely traumatised. Hey. You're Mark Wilton, aren't you? Yeah. I'm Frank Thorne. My shout. Your friend Mark's writing for the Sunday Times now. Did you know that? Lee's had to face a new test of endurance from Northern Territory Police. 
I asked Mark not to write about the police. He wrote it with another journalist. They're all saying it. All the papers. And listen to this. It was 3 a.m. and Joanne Lees had woken with a start. Her aching body racked with sobs. How would he know? It's not like he's in bed with me, is it? We do not as yet have any leads on the man. Mark Wilkinson, and Joanne Advocate, how far are you from a positive ID from the truck stop photo? No comment. Does Joanne Lees have a history of mental health problems? I find that question offensive. Next. I think we should turn this off. She's a suspect in this case. She's not a suspect at this stage. That's ridiculous. What do you mean a suspect? No comment. If you need a good lawyer, Mark will find you someone. Mark is one of the reasons they don't trust me. Look, um, I don't think it's a good idea for me to stay here anymore. I'm going to pack my stuff. Ryan, good to see you. Found a body south of Alice Springs. No, there's no tooth to that. You're lying. Now, I've flown here today because I'm concerned that this case isn't going as well as it should be. You mean because you haven't found the man? We need to work together on this. In the short term, that means dealing with the media. I'm not talking to them. I've done one interview already. Our phones aren't ringing. Not enough people are calling in with information. It's on the front page of every newspaper anyway. People need to hear it from you. Why? Prove them wrong. Tell them, tell them there's a gunman out there who needs to be caught. Do the police think that I am a suspect in this case? Absolutely not. But you need to deal with the media. And you really think that'll help find me? Yes. Well, then I'll do it. Miss Lees has your list of questions, and she'll be with you shortly. Why weren't there any footprints? Well, I don't know. What's happened to Pete? If I knew that, we wouldn't be here. Well, it's just a list of questions from the press to get the ball rolling. I'll only answer these three. Oh, please, be reasonable. I won't do it otherwise. I won't. Miss Lees will only have one reporter and one cameraman in the room. Settle down. Settle down! We will set up a video link in another room down the corridor. Miss Lees has said she will answer these three questions. The questions she's prepared to answer, they're all to do with the media, how we pissed her off. What's her problem? My lot says she won't talk. Go for her. Our purpose at this stage was to get the message out across Australia in the hope that we could find the person who we believe has killed Peter Falconio. We certainly encourage her to speak to the media. The world's press have come here to help publicise the case and hope that they find this man. She then refuses to cooperate. She refuses to talk to us. I guess it depends on how you see reporters. Do they report the facts or not? Do they twist your words? Ready? If I could say 
one thing to the man that's done this, I would um, ask him to let the police know where Pete is. <clears throat> um, I have a problem with all press who distort the truth and doubt my story. Anyone that's met me, they believe me. They're uh, ready for you. Come through. What do you want? We need to go over aspects of your statement that we can't explain. And we'd like to talk to you about Pete. I've told you everything. Again and again. You haven't told us how you felt about him. How would you describe your relationship with him? I can't talk about Pete right now. Why not? What do you want from me? At this stage, we want closure for Pete's family. They need to take him home. Can you help us with that, Joanne? I've helped you all that I can. Are you sure? We understand you want to go back to the UK. I don't want to go back, but I'm no use here. Look, whatever it is that you might... Now, am I free to go? Yes. You want to keep the surveillance going on her? Everything, until she leaves. Phone calls, emails, the lot. They found no footprints of a gunman, and that was despite the police using expert Aboriginal trackers. Trackers who also told them that nobody had sat in the hiding place in the bush for anything like the five hours Joanne said she did. She said that you passed within two metres of her, so if you did, I've always wondered why someone would shoot someone. A perfect stranger in cold blood on the side of the road. And then let the only witness to the alleged murder get away. This is Martin Bashir. From ITV's Tonight Show. I've told your producer I'm not interested. Please, don't hang up. I just want to meet with you and explain. I can help you get your story out there. Obviously, there'd be money involved. Look, I can't talk now, OK? Hey, Joanne, just a minute. Uh, Joanne Leeds has, uh, in fact, now left Australia. She has left Australia. She boarded a flight to Singapore about 3.30 p.m. our time. Thanks for updating us. My pleasure, Alan. Have you heard anything <clears throat> from the other? That's why it's some of the things. What are you going to do now? Move back to Brighton. <clears throat> I feel closest to Pete there. Mum doesn't want any of Pete's stuff moved. Not till he comes back to get it. It'd have to be a miracle now. Wouldn't it?
How are you feeling? Nervous. I hate talking about myself. Don't be stupid. You'll be great. Now, we're going to have to talk through how you feel about Pete, OK? Mm -hmm. In order for me to do what I'm going to do to the Australian police, which is basically going to be very humiliating for them, the viewers have got to understand that the reason for all of this is that Pete was a good man. Can you help me with that, Joanne? Yeah. OK, one's good. Two, move in tighter, please. That's good. OK, Martin, it's yours. People have accused you of being cold. How do you answer that? <clears throat> um, I do bottle up my feelings. It's true. In Alice Springs, after the attack, I did cry every single day, but just not in front of the cameras. OK, to one. I didn't want my mum to see it. And Pete? How do you feel about Pete? Where do you want me to start? Brighton. On his graduation day, there's a picture of the two of you together. Mm -hmm. In this special edition of The Tonight Programme, Joanne Lees tells the story of what happened to her the night she says her boyfriend was murdered. She says? There's no weapon, no gun. No body. And there's Peter's blood on the ground. Some people say the person who murdered Peter was Joanne. For the avoidance of, of any doubt, and because I know this is the question people would want me to ask you, mm -hmm. did you kill Peter Falconia? No. No, I didn't. Where's the stuff about the police? Peter Falconio remains shrouded in mystery. The police have no new leads. And unless there's a major breakthrough, then it seems unlikely that the Australian outback will ever give up the secret of what has become of Peter Falconio. Happy, happy. This time you're in the shit. You're going away for a long run. I might have something for you. Nah. <laughs> Don't even try it. Peter Falconio. That pom. Mate of mine reckon he done it. Why does he reckon he did it? Nah, he talked about burying a body in a spoon drain. He's digging, he reckons. And where is this mate of yours? Ah, he's gone to ground. But I reckon I could help you find him.
I'm Ford Bat, Joe's family liaison officer. Detective Sergeant Kerr. Mitch Jones, welcome to Sunny Brighton. This way. Right. Of the tape, Joanne Lee's selected photograph number 10, Bradley Murdoch. I'm right, aren't I? He's the man that's been arrested, yeah. So, um. So, what happens now? The man accused of murdering British backpacker Peter Falconio arrived in Darwin today under heavy police escort. Northern Territory Chief Prosecutor Rex Wilde told officials there will be no communication with the media. Bradley Murdoch is on remand in Darwin prison. Evidence against him will be put in front of a magistrate who will then decide whether there is enough evidence to try him for the murder of Peter Falconio and the attempted abduction of Joanne Lee. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Say hello to Anne. Hi. She's new to our legal team. What do you know about the Lindy Chamberlain case? Good morning. Good morning. Hello? Hello. As she said, her baby was killed by a dingo. No one believed her. She went to prison and was released on appeal. Come in, come in. From a Northern Territory point of view, the Chamberlain case was a disaster. The police came out of it looking like buffets. Sit down. Okay. The legal system came out of it badly as well. She got a raw go, Lindy Chamberlain. And she did three years. Like that ever happens again. Victims and accused, they must be given a fair go. Here we go. Joanne, welcome to Darwin. Uh, I'm Tony Elliott. This is Anne Barnett. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Well, uh, Rex's plan of getting you here a week early seems to have worked. There's no press. I'm not doing any interviews. No photos. Nothing. Hi, Joe. I'm Rex. I prefer Joanne. Joanne, then. Let me show you around. How was your flight? <clears throat> Fine. As you know, you'll just be putting evidence in front of a magistrate. It's a formality. It's part of the Australian legal process. Well, I've been told the case can be thrown out of court at this stage. Theoretically, yes, but very unlikely. My office has been working flat out on this case. We've put in a new computer system. And they are even building a new courtroom. I want to talk to you, please. Alone? Follow me. I am not happy with the way this case has been handled. The police, right from the beginning, they have just been... Well, 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 let's just say they weren't very sympathetic. I see. Are you a police lawyer? I'm the director of public prosecutions. I prosecute for the community on cases brought by the police. So you are then? We're independent. Have you ever even worked outside the Northern Territory? I was a practicing barrister for 20 years in Melbourne before I came up here. And before you ask, this isn't my first murder trial. In fact, I'll probably be prosecuting other murder trials at the same time as this one. I hope you'll have time to focus on this one, then. She's quite something. 
wonder what a jury's gonna think of her. Hey, Mouse. Have you seen them? What? I think she's hiding something. I reckon that's another guy. Oh. Would you like a glass of water or a cup of coffee? I'd just like to get on with it. This is what's going to happen. You're going to stand up in front of a magistrate and I'm going to ask you questions. You'll try and build for him a picture of your life with Peter, your relationship. Then we'll move to your journey from Sydney to Alice Springs. And finally, we'll talk through the night of the attack. You OK with that? So you left Sydney, you travelled to Alice Springs in the combi. You enjoyed that? I could have done with some four-star hotel stops along the way, but yeah. You like the closeness, the sharing with Pete? Of course. Why wouldn't I? What do you want me to say? It's useful to illustrate that you are a loving couple. Before we go on with the rest of your story, Joanne, we need to address these. I need to ask you about this relationship. It wasn't a relationship. It was a friendship. I made it clear to the police. I never hid anything. Let's rewind a bit. How did the police find out about this? They're uh, ready for you. I was so focused on finding Pete that I didn't realise how it looked. So who's Steph? It's a name I, I used for him. For this lad called Nick Riley. Well, why do you use that name? Because, um... I didn't want Pete to know that I was emailing him. You didn't want us to know either? I didn't think it was any of your business. This is a murder investigation, Joanne. Everything is our business. Now tell us about Nick Riley. He was friends with... some friends of mine at work. Just a bit of fun. I never went to university. I never had that kind of social life. Pete did, I didn't. It was a friendship that overstepped the boundaries. Nothing more than that. Nick had nothing to do with what happened. Vince, how you doing, love? 
Hello. I hope I bump into you. I'm here to give evidence. <laughs> what do you reckon about me in the wheelchair, eh? A couple of pallets fell on me. <laughs> I've got to go. <clears throat> My car's waiting. You've got to lead it in front of a magistrate. Get straight in there and ask her, who's Nick Riley? It's not relevant to the case. Who cares? If the defence brings it up and we haven't, we'll look like total jerks. I need to gain her trust. She screwed around. That's her problem, not ours. If Algie's found this in police... I'm running this case, Tony. I'll do it my way. Mark. Ah, Frank. Congratulations. Editor of the Northern Territory News, eh? Yeah. So here to see the great man himself. Yeah, so, uh, what's this Grant Algy like anyway? Ah, he gives great headlines. There's one man who can get Murdoch off, it's Grant Algy. Thank you. I've called this conference because, unlike the Director of Public Prosecutions, Brad Murdoch does not have a media liaison officer. He doesn't have a website. <laughs> he has a presumption of innocence and an absolute right to a fair trial. Twig and I are here to make sure that he gets one. One of the biggest murder cases in recent times will begin in Darwin today. From the magistrate's court to Darwin's Supreme Court. become one of the most sensational murder cases. We've been trying to hear it. It's expected to last six weeks. We've flown into Darwin in the past few days. This is intended to be called the trial will appear. Police have taken over 600 witness statements to this point. And will give evidence in the next few weeks. And every day, Bradley Murdoch will be driven in a police van from America. For real news. Joanna Beard composed as she entered the court. We should be finished by the mid-morning break, then you're on. Feeling OK? Are you going to bring up Nick? No. Thanks. If the defence does, I'll just fend them off. Now, Joanne, you ID'd Bradley Murdoch on a photo board. He'll be standing in front of you today. Now, this is something I ask all my witnesses to do. It's nothing to do with you personally. It's just something I'd like you to do for me. What? I want you to take a good look at him. I want us to know we got the right man. The evidence you are now about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please say, so help me God. So help me God. <clears throat> you may be seated. On the day of the 14th of July, when you were in Alice Springs, were you and Pete getting on? We were getting on fine. You see, we have witnesses who say they saw you in a restaurant and you were arguing. I object. If there are witnesses, then let's have their names. Sustained. So there was no problem with the relationship? <clears throat> no problem at all. You left Sydney at the beginning of June, is that right? Yes. Can you remember which route you took? Um, you'd have to show me a map. When you were in Alice Springs after the alleged attack, did you have a secret email account? Who is Steph, Miss Lees? I don't know. Is not Steph a false name for someone you were writing emails to named Nick? I object to this line of questioning. Who is Nick? A friend. 
a friend with whom you had a sexual relationship. This is not relevant to the case. The witness has painted a picture of a harmonious relationship with Peter Falconio. This is not necessarily the case, and I should be entitled to explore it. You can continue. Did you have a sexual relationship with Nick Riley while you were in Sydney? No. Really? I made a fool out of Pete in front of all those people. We're going to get you on a flight out tonight, Joanne. <laughs> you said you'd fend him off. Well, at least it's out of the way now. He can't pull the same trick in the trial. I have stood up there, being ripped to shreds while he, that man, is sitting there watching. And you go on about giving him a about me. What about giving me a fair go? Look, you said no... You were meant to be looking after me. You said no one believed you. I do. forward to the trial. I don't have to do anything. <sighs> Vince. It's OK. It's OK. I fancied Nick a lot. And then I was confused about him and Pete. Pete was the best person. I didn't deserve him. People have affairs, Joanne. Bloody Nick Riley. You look back and it means nothing. Do you know what the worst thing is? I'll never be able to make it up to Pete. I'll never be able to say I'm sorry. Can the accused and counsel please stand? I rule that there is sufficient evidence for Mr. Murdoch to stand trial. Mr. Algy has given us a little preview of the kind of defence he's going to run. He's going to cut and paste pieces of this case and he's going to tell the jury that they make a comprehensible whole. Well, we're going to put every piece of evidence in front of the jury and after they've heard our evidence, we're going to trust that they come to a proper and a rightful conclusion. Now, Tony, I want more forensics. And Anne, check out that vehicle. I want to know what part of Joanne's story we can substantiate and what part we can't. And I want every witness involved in this case called in. We can call as many witnesses as we like, but without Joanne, we haven't got a case. Is she coming back? I don't know. Rex Wild here, Joanne. Bringing to keep you informed of what's going on out here. You might not want to talk to us, but I think it's important you know what's happened. We've discovered that forensics did take a swab from the gear stick of yours and Peter's combi. The result was too late a call, so they didn't admit it as evidence. We've been doing some research, and there's someone over in the UK. Can 
your neck of the woods actually in Yorkshire. Well, he has a method of testing which reads very low DNA results. We're hoping to persuade him to get on board. Joanne, I really need to talk to you. If you're there, will you pick up? No one can come to the phone at the moment, but please leave a message. Me again. From Darwin, Rex Wilde reports. I'm becoming very intimate with your answer phone. Joanne, and another interesting thing has come up about our friend, Mr. Myrtle. We found out that he was carrying your hairband on his person as some kind of token. What's this about my hairband? Joanne, hello. That's good, you're there. You remember when Murdoch was arrested, the police went through his possessions and they found a hairband that was like yours. Well, um, they've gone back through the evidence and, um, look, Anne's here. She knows how to do this better than me. She can tell you all about it. Hi, Joanne. It's great to talk to you. The police seem to have found a hairband resembling yours attached to Murdoch's gun holster. So it takes on symbolic importance. Killers often do that, keep something that belonged to their victim. How's it going over there? We're thinking about you. Okay, um... I lost my job at the travel agents because people kept staring at me. I've got a new job, working with vulnerable adults. I like it. I know all about vulnerable. We're looking forward to seeing you next month at the trial. Ring me with any more news. She didn't say she wasn't coming, so we go ahead presuming that she will be here. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Tony, how are you doing? Thanks for coming. Right. We tested them, but any DNA samples found on them were way too low for us to call. And uh, presumably they've been handled by a great many people. I'm afraid so. Has anyone pulled these apart? The loops, you mean? Mm -hmm. No. This tape, the back of it will be sticky. Could have collected sweat, pieces of skin from the person who made the handcuffs. Can you test for that? Absolutely. What if I said to you, we've had another look at the cuffs and it's Murdoch's DNA on them? Oh, for Christ's sake. Hello, Joanne, it's Rex. Ah, uh, I guess you've heard the news. Well, the review of this new evidence it will cause a delay in the trial. Yes, I have. I have heard the news. Do you know what it's like, this waiting? It's unbearable. I've had to move again because of the press. You've got to hang in there. What for? To be stood up in front of that lawyer and humiliated. To have the papers write more crap about me. Look, I'll get the Nick question out of the way in my opening address. Have it over and done with. I'm not coming back for the trial. Joanne, you have to. We can't do this without you. Look, I know a number of people have let you down. I did too, during the, the committals. But, look, you know, we're on your side. you just got to meet us halfway. I can't do it. Joanne, look, you've got more balls than the rest of us put together. You got away from that bastard in the first place. Who do you want to be with you at the trial? I mean, we'll pay for someone to come out to support you. There's only one person that I want. I'm doing this for him. Joanne, our case is three times stronger now with this new evidence. Look, you know, please, Joanne, just one more push. We're almost there. Darwin Airport, accompanied by Detective Sergeant Phil Banton, her liaison officer from Brighton Police. 
On the first day of the trial of Bradley Murdoch, Peter Falconia's parents and brother Paul accompanied Joanne Lees into the dark. Charged with Peter Falconia's murder for the first time since July 2001, wearing a long sleeve white shirt, black skirt, and a Do I look okay? <laughs> <laughs> you look terrific. <laughs> There's a couple of things we need to talk through. The vehicle. We've been through every possibility and there's no way there could be a gap between the seats. So, why do I remember it like that? You did receive a severe hit to the head. The mind can play tricks. Will you at least think about that? I also think you should show the jury how you got your hands from behind you to in front. Show them? Hmm. Tie you up. Let them see how you escaped. No, not in front of that man. All right. But will you really try to tell the jury your story? Any time you can show emotion, especially about Pete. <clears throat> I thought that... <clears throat> that I was going to die. I... Uh, <clears throat> I was terrified that... That he was going to rape me. And then I asked him if he'd shot Pete, and he didn't reply. And, and that's when I thought that he might have. <clears throat> that he might have killed Pete. What were your future plans with Pete? Can you tell us about those? Okay. <clears throat> we were going to be in Fiji for our birthdays. We were talking about it, about She can't do it. She can't open up. She did well. You should have pushed her more. The jury didn't warm to her, and if they don't like her, they're not going to convict him. See you tomorrow. He's too late, Mac. Lay off him. Oh, coming from you. We're in court now. We're a team. We play as a team. Even if we lose? Even if we lose. When you spoke to the police, you believed the man pushed you from the cabin into the rear. Why has your recollection changed? <clears throat> well, at, at the time, I did believe I had been pushed from the front to the back. It was only afterwards that I began to doubt myself. Really? So you deny that you told the police artist you moved your hands to the front of you in the man's vehicle? I don't remember saying that. You say you moved your hands from the back to the front of you in the bush? Yes. So... I'll show you if you like. How close does he get to you in the bush? I don't know. I was, um... I was in the bush. I was frightened. I suggest that we break at this point. The jury are excused. I have some matters that need to be discussed. Mr. Algy, 
Miss Lees has offered to demonstrate how she can move her hands from behind her back to her front. You have not picked her up on this offer. I believe you must do so. I hear what you say, but I don't I'm believe glad you. you hear what I say. If she offers a key piece of evidence for her story to the jury, you must take her up on it. If you don't do so in your cross-examination tomorrow, I shall personally order it. Done in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Looks like your ballet dancer niece got that one wrong. Yeah, well, she's had four years to get it right. Fifty bucks. I found a substantial DNA profile on the handcuffs used to tie up Miss Lee's. Did the profile match Mr. Murdoch's? It did. It was 100 million to one, that of the defendant. In Darwin, a British forensic expert has given new DNA the evidence... ...driving the along an outback Northern Territory highway when a man in a four-wheel drive urged them to pull over. Put a canvas on Bradley Murdoch's truck in June 01. Rodney Adams was in a road train heading yes, south... Yes, um, Joanne Lees and Peter Falcone I did stop it earlier on. I retraced my steps a second time. I took photographs of the bitumen. So you say you saw Peter Falconio a week after his disappearance? Well, if it wasn't him, it was his twin. He bought a drink and a chocolate bar. What the hell were you doing? Why did you call that woman? If I didn't, the defence would have. She was honest, but misguided. Any jury could see that. Well, I hope you're right. We have to trust the jury, Joanne. With all the evidence in front of the statements to this point, and it's understood that the prosecutor has around 300 pieces of evidence to present. What's he trying to do? Bore them into submission? Oh, Rex is always like this. He knows precise information led. Well, it's not going to win him this one. The witness may step down. Thank you. Are you calling any more witnesses, Mr. Wilde? That concludes the prosecution's case, Your Honor. Are you calling witnesses for the defence, Mr. Algy? I am, Your Honour. Call Brad Murdoch. Yay! Hand it over. Do you wish to take the oath in the Bible or an affirmation? Take the oath. Please take this Bible in your right hand. On the 14th of July, 2001, did you go to Barrow Creek? No, I didn't. Did you have anything at all to do with the alleged disappearance of Mr. Falconio? No, I did not. I have no further questions. Mr. Wilde? Where... Did you hide the body, Mr. Murdoch? Objection. Murdoch. Objection sustained. You killed Peter Falconio. Objection. No, I didn't. Objection sustained. You assaulted Joanna Lee. No, I did not. You kept this hairband as a souvenir of the night's events. No, I did not. Why didn't you talk about the police finding my hairband on his gun holster? The judge ruled it as inadmissible evidence. Everything is stacked in his favour. Everything. You might think 
that the first piece of evidence is the vehicle at Barrow Creek, which you might think on the evidence given by Miss Lees had front to rear access. You see, we have a problem here. Miss Lees is not sure whether it did happen like that or it didn't. Is it good enough that you're called to deliberate on a man for murder to accept the shifting sands of the description of the man's vehicle? You might also think that the DNA evidence doesn't stack up. We have heard experts in this court challenge Dr Whittaker's method of low DNA testing a method which not even the FBI recognise or use for fear of inaccurate results. Remember Lindy Chamberlain. Three years in prison because of a haemoglobin test carried out by the Northern Territory Police which proved to be fatally incorrect. Guilty members of the jury carries a degree of absolute certainty. A verdict of not guilty could simply mean, well, we know something happened at Barrow Creek that night, but we're not sure what it was. Try as we have, we've got a doubt. I've got a doubt. And as a juror, I am obliged to give the benefit of that doubt to the accused. So I find him not guilty. Uh, we'll reconvene in 20 minutes. Thank you. You wondered where you'd got to. It's not going well, is it? You told the jury the truth. You can't do more than that. These are solid Northern Territory people. They didn't come here to watch a soap opera. They came here to be jurors on a murder trial. And they can smell Algie's pomade from a mile off. Trust me, I'm not going to let this bastard walk away. There are suggestions from the defence that Joanne Lee's story doesn't add up. In some ways, it doesn't. That is because she can only tell us what she knows. She can't tell us that she saw Peter's body. Of course, she didn't. She was fighting for her life. You have to remember that the police took over 300 pages of interviews from Joanne. There were bound to be differences. But against the odds, she did well. She did very well. Look at this identikit again. Look at the face, not the hair. We accept the hair is wrong. Four years later, Look at the man in the dock. Looks like him. Of course, it is him. We don't have a motive. But we don't need a motive. We know that Bradley Murdoch was there. Bradley Murdoch's DNA was on Joanne Lee's T-shirt. It was inside the combi van, and it was down deep inside the cuffs that bound her. This evidence links Bradley Murdoch to the victim of the crime, to the scene of the crime, and to the instruments of the crime. Along with Joanne Lee's identification of Bradley Murdoch, this DNA evidence is utterly compelling. Peter Falconio died of a gunshot from a handgun fired by Bradley Murdoch. His body will be found one day.
The jury will retire to consider their verdict. Would you like someone to sit with you? No. Okay. Jury, I've got a question for the judge. The jury would like to know, Your Honour, if we can convict for murder in the absence of a body. If they don't know that, they can't have understood anything. <sighs> Christ. Are we in trouble here? I've reached a verdict. We've reached a unanimous verdict, Your Honour. Would you read it out, please? We find Bradley Murdoch guilty of the murder of Peter Falconio and the assault and attempted abduction of Joanne Lees. Members of the jury, for what it's worth, can I say in response to your verdicts that I entirely agree? In the future, do not look back with second thoughts or doubts. Thank you. I shall hear victim statements from Miss Lees and Mr. Falconio's mother ruling on the earlier state Mr. Murdoch can apply for parole. statement. I want you to read it. You're sure? I trust you. I have suffered the loss of the person who knew me the best and loved me the most. Pete was the person who encouraged me to believe and be strong and a better person. He was the one I was to travel the world with and share new experiences. I never imagined not being with him and not sharing my life with him. I have visible scars from the physical injuries I received that night. They are fading with me. The emotional scars, however, remain. I am stronger, wiser, less naive. I am skeptical, untrusting, fearful, and heartbroken. It's lonely being me. If 
Would the prisoner stand, please? You are a cold-blooded killer who's shown no sign of remorse. I'm drawn to the conclusion that your prospects of rehabilitation are minimal. I therefore sentence you to 28 years in prison. Tell us what you did with Pete. You shouldn't expect it. I'm going to keep on hoping. Thank you. 